Don't run into that wall. And let's talk about collisions in Unity. Alright, we found us back in Unity once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking a little bit about collisions over here. Once again in 2D. However, in this case, they are going to be pretty similar in the 2D and the 3D case. Basically, every time a method that you're going to see here says 2D at the end, just strike out the 2D and don't put that in and then you almost have the 3D case basically done. We're back here in the scene for our five ways of movement. This is also available as a Unity package, so no worries at all. One thing that the player basically has is a movement script as well as a collider and a rigid body 2D that's quite important here. And then here we have an area that is actually a trigger and we're going to duplicate this area because this is now no longer a trigger. We're going to make this a collider. So instead of making the trigger, we're going to make this a collider. We're also going to change the color just so that we know that it is a collision. And let's just say for realism's sake, this is going to be sort of over the over the bottom of the stone here, let's say. So let's just approximate this. That's going to be totally fine. You don't have to make this exactly. This is roughly going to be it. Let's call this 1.75 and then call this 1.5. And then this is going to be a 3 maybe a 2.85. That's going to be all right. So this is going to be the collider over here, the collision. In theory, as long as we got the rigid body, the collider over here and the on the player and the collider here is set to not be a trigger, we are already going to be colliding with this. So if I move over here and I'm going to go here, you can see I continue to press D, but it does not work. I It doesn't let me through. However, there's a couple of things that are quite interesting. So the first thing is that if I do this, look at this. <laughs> All of a sudden, my player is, a, well, rotating around. And you can see now it's rotating around in the... <laughs> now it's rotating in space. Uh, so we've just created the same rotation that we have did that we did in the last tutorial, but a little bit different over here. And we can, in theory, I think we can make this even faster. Oh, now we're going the other way around. There you go. So this is, of course, not quite what you want. So to make sure your player is not rotating around crazily or any object for that matter, inside of the rigid body, under the constraints, you want to freeze the Z rotation. This does not mean that you can't change the rotation manually. So the way that we did it in the last tutorial, like I said, where I showed you the rotation, you can still change it very easily with that via the transform. However, the rigid body is not going to change the rotation via the physics system. That's the general idea. And then let's also create a script to detect the collisions. So we're going to make a new C-sharp script. We're going to call this the detect collision script. Let's immediately add this to the player and let's go in here and let's see. So for this, once again, we don't need either of those methods over here. But what we will need is we want to override V on collision enter 2D. You can see this is the 2D one. You can also see it needs the rigid body. This one is the 3D option, so we're going to do choose this. Just click on it, press tab to autocomplete. We also want the on collision stay 2D. This is of course obviously the method that gets called when you stay on the collision and then the on collision exit 2D. Awesome. So here we can, for example, then debug.log and we can say collision started. And pretty much we can just duplicate this over to here and here. And then this is going to be collision continuing. And this is collision stopping. And for some added dramatic effect, you can also output certain things from the collision right here. So we can, for example, take a look at collision dot and you can see we get the context. So this is the context points. We can get the collider. This is the actual collider. So for example, we can say collider dot name and we can just output the name. So what we can also do is we can just put this in the same one. So let's just get the name into the same debug, kind of like this. Let's do the same for all of them. Basically, we're just we're also outputting the name of the actual collider that we're colliding with. So that's pretty cool. So those are the three methods for the collision that are quite important. So let's take another look at this, making sure that the collision script is on the player. And if we now go in here and we basically collide with this, you can see all of a sudden we have sort of the collision. We're also continuing and then we're stopping. And the name here is, of course, the collider. That's pretty awesome. So if I go in here and I keep pressing D, you can see that but it continues to basically go because I'm always trying to move into the space. If I stop pressing D all of a sudden, you can see it goes a little bit longer, but then it stops because once again, the rigid body is set to start awake. If we were to set it to never sleep, it's going to now continue over here. This is quite interesting because if you actually take a look at the the overlapping colliders, they are barely, like, not even really touching. If you take a look at the collider right here, right, it, it stops right here. And then the player collider is actually right here. So they are not really touching, but but this is actually quite important to get the never sleep over here. If you have any sort of gravity involved, right, because, of course, if I were to go down over here, right, now I would be, quote unquote, standing on this collider area, right? And I were to now say, well, only do start awake. All of a sudden, right, if you were to, for example, check whether or not the player is on the ground inside of the on collision state 2D, for example, which would be a valid way to check this, it would now be like, oh, we're no longer on the ground. And now all of a sudden we can't jump anymore. So this is a 
very important thing. This is a similar way that the that the trigger might not work when you don't have this on. So do keep in mind that the sleeping mode here is quite important. And there we go. And that's pretty much the idea. We are now longer rotating. One very interesting thing as well is the difference in movement and how this looks. So you can see if I go onto this, right, I slowly bounce back. And if I continue to press W to go move up, it doesn't do anything, right? The player just stands still because the physics system is like, you ain't going further than this. However, if I were to change to the move towards, look what happens now. Now I'm sort of sort of struggling a little bit because every update method, I'm basically moving into the collider and then it's shifting me out because the physics system is sort of saying, no, 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 you, you, you can't come in here, you can't come in here. That's very interesting. Similar things happens to with the transform, translate, and as well the direct position change. Similar thing happens. So do keep in mind that if you were to have a movement type, in this case, the physics movement type actually makes it so that the collisions are... I mean, basically frame perfect. And that's a bit about collisions. Next time in this video right here, we'll talk about three different methods on how you can wait for seconds in Unity. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.